Gully Kit have just released their updated version of the joystick replacements for the Steam Deck. And what's great about these is that no soldering skills are required. With the earlier version, you would need to solder the cable for the touchpads, but with this version, it all comes pre-assembled. This means it should be really easy to swap them out, so let's take a look. Opening it up, and we find the two joystick modules for the left and right. As you can see, this is a complete unit. Everything is soldered and ready to simply be dropped into your Steam Deck. Depending on when your Steam Deck was manufactured, you will either have a Type A joystick or a Type B joystick. Thankfully, these Gully Kit joysticks support both, but you'll need to put it into the correct mode. To find out which version you have, go to the settings on your Steam Deck and down to System. Then scroll all the way down until you find the Steam Deck controller ID. If it starts MEDA like mine does, then you have the Type A joysticks. If it starts MHDA, then you have Type B. If you do select the wrong one, you may find that the touch buttons don't work or the joysticks don't work at all. On the back of each module, at the top, you'll find the switch. Make sure you set this to the corresponding mode for both of the joysticks. As you can see, my left joystick was already set to A, but the right one was set to B, so it's really important to check and set both of them to the correct mode. Whilst you have the modules in your hands, I'd recommend giving the thumb cap a hard push down to make sure that it is fitted correctly. I did hear about people having issues and it was because the cap was loose. We are now ready to start performing surgery on our Steam Deck, so let's power it down and remove the back cover. I recommend using the original Steam Deck case so that you can protect the Steam Deck from getting damaged. I have my Steam Deck in the JSOX mod case, so first I need to remove that. I also have thumb covers, so I'll need to remove those also. There are eight screws on the rear that need to be removed. The four on the outer edges are longer screws, so be sure not to mix these up and make sure you stay organized. Before I take the back off, I actually wanted to show you how accurate my current sticks are for comparison later. So here I'm just booting the Steam Deck back up. In the settings under controller, there are calibration settings, starting with the left joystick. As you can see, my left stick is actually slightly off and doesn't return to the center each time. This may seem like an issue, but with the default dead zone settings, it's absolutely fine. Taking a look at the right stick, this one is actually fine and it's only ever so slightly off. The stock sticks have an accuracy of plus or minus 5%, so you'll find it won't always return perfectly to center every time. Sometimes it will be slightly off as shown here. Okay, so before proceeding further, you'll want to make sure that you have removed your SD card. If you try and take the cover off whilst it's inserted, then there's a good chance that you'll end up damaging it. To remove the back cover, you'll need a pry tool or a spudger. I find inserting the tool below the L2 and R2 buttons works the best to pop out the clips on either side, and then it should be easy to remove the back cover. Starting with the left joystick, since we did flip the Steam Deck over, this will now be on the right. The first thing to do is remove the blue ribbon cable. You do this by lifting the black locking flap. You can use tweezers, but I actually found it easier to just use my fingers because my tweezers were rubbish. Just be careful because it is fragile. You can then grab the ribbon cable by the blue tab and carefully pull it downwards and then move it out of the way. We then need to remove the three screws holding the joystick in place using a Phillips screwdriver. You can then remove the joystick module by pushing up from underneath and it should come out really easy. We then repeat the process for the other joystick, including removing the ribbon cable. If your old joysticks are still working fine and don't have stick drift, then you'll want to keep these as backups should you ever have issues in the future. We can then start fitting the new Gully Kit joysticks. Again, I'm just checking that the cap is fitted properly by giving it a firm press downwards. And again, checking to make sure that each joystick is set to the correct mode. Whilst it's in your hands, it's also easier to lift the black locking flap. You can then drop it right into your Steam Deck and there are guiding clips so you can't go wrong. You'll need to lift the Steam Deck off the table for this part and then you can put the screws in. You'll want to make sure that it's not over tightened, but not too loose either. You can then reconnect the ribbon cable and then secure the black locking flap downwards. 
once happy, repeat the steps for the other joystick. As you can see, here are the guiding clips at the top and there is another on the right. And providing you insert the joysticks into these guiding clips, then it should sit flush. You can then put the screws back in and again, don't over tighten them, but make sure that they are securely fitted. We can then reinsert the ribbon cable, same as before. And that's it, the joystick modules are now installed and we can now start the configuration steps. With the back cover still removed, we need to boot up the Steam Deck. It may seem scary, but don't worry, you'll be fine. Once the Steam Deck is booted, we need to click the tiny button on the rear of each of the joysticks to get the joysticks calibrated. Before pressing the button, ensure that you do not touch the sticks during the process. We can then go into the joystick calibration settings the same as earlier, which is under settings, controllers and calibration. Starting with the left joystick, let's take a look and straight away I can tell that this is not centered. According to the instructions, if this happens, you need to move the joysticks to the symmetrical position of the central point and then press the button simultaneously on the rear. If done correctly, then the stick should return to the center point. Easy, right? Wrong. This is an absolute nightmare. How on earth are you meant to move the joystick to a precise location and then press a tiny button simultaneously on the rear? Having said that, I did manage to do it, although not perfect, but this took me longer than I'd care to admit. So first impressions aren't great. The next thing I wanted to try is the calibration setup and this is done over on desktop mode. You need to launch this from the console, so open up the console and enter thumbstick cal and then hit enter. You'll then be prompted to rotate the thumbstick's full rotation twice. The instructions tell you to click off the console whilst performing this step. So it did that and then I completed the process, it did only take a few seconds. Jumping back over to gaming mode and back to the calibration settings, I can see that it is better, but it's still not perfect. The guide mentions that the accuracy is plus or minus 3% compared to the original sticks, but I've got to admit, I am a little disappointed that these are not 100% accurate. Next, I wanted to test this out in a game to make sure that the touchpads are working. There's actually no way to test the touchpads are working in the calibration settings, so I'll need to boot up a game to test this. Within the controller mapping, we can set some actions to the touchpads. So I'll do that for both the left and right joysticks. And as you can see, it's now working fine. So success. So do I think the Gully Kit joysticks are worth it? Well, I think it depends. If you have severe stick drift or broken joysticks, then yes, absolutely, they are worth it. And swapping them out is really easy, except for the calibration steps, which is a pain in the ass. But if like me, your joysticks are working fine, even if not completely centered, then I wouldn't actually recommend swapping them out. There just isn't any point if your joysticks are working fine. I'll have a link in the description if you want to pick some up for yourself. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.